Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another live interview here at DCD Virginia in Leesburg, just uh, not too far from Data Center Alley. And we are talking all things data centers at this event. First day of the event. Very excited to have a repeat JSA TV guest. He joined us at DCD New York uh, not too long ago. Um, so we've got Jim Marsh, who is Director of Key Accounts for Munter's Data Center Technologies. Thanks for coming back to hang with us. Well, Candace, it's great to be here. And thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited to talk about what Munter's has going on lately, which is quite a lot, actually, in your data center division. So first of all, you recently celebrated the one-year anniversary of your partnership with GeoClima. Uh, so can you just look back on that first year of partnership a little bit and tell us some of the key highlights? Sure. Uh, it was very exciting news in 2024 uh, when we learned that we were going to be acquiring a chiller manufacturer because we've been selling heat uh, rejection, I'm sorry, heat absorption, which is the fan arrays and the CDUs, but we didn't have the uh, complete system, not having the heart, uh, which is the chiller. So when we discovered we were getting a chiller manufacturer and then to learn it was Geoclima with its innovative design, it paralleled what Munters has brought to market. Um, and so the uh, benefits that we've seen over the last year and the impact has been the combined team between Geoclima and Munter's Data Center Technologies, personnel and products, uh, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So we've now got a uh, footprint globally. Uh, we had acquired EdPAC in Ireland in 2022, which gave us a nice foothold in, in Europe and you know, sort of the global market. Uh, now with Geoclima, we have a plant in Italy and we have a plant in Thailand. We have sales offices in Spain, Italy, UK, Ireland, um, Australia, and Thailand. So again, able to service. And, and we were just uh, rolling out our uh, Circle Miser Chiller, which we're going to talk about in a minute, um, globally. So, right. you know, that's the big, the big change has been the combined teams, production, you know, just and markets. Yeah, so tell us about that a little bit. So your Circle Miser chiller has been called the most efficient solution for AI workloads. So what are maybe some metrics or um, some anecdotes that you can tell us that would kind of support that? Yes, um, so the Circle Miser primarily is named for its circular condensers. So when you look at it, it's a different looking chiller. Um, Geoclima has built every flavor of chiller out there relative to air-cooled, water-cooled, uh, free-cooling with evaporative. I mean, so there's a lot of different ways to, to chill water. But what we've landed on, especially for the North American market, is Circle Miser because of its very efficient uh, performance and a very uh, compact footprint. And relative to today's designs, uh, the buildings are so dense that the more heat rejection you can put in a, in a footprint, mm -hmm. just like heat absorption, the more you can pack into a white space, you want to be able to match that with the more you can pack on a roof or in a field to reject heat into the atmosphere. Um, the way that we do that is through innovations, not only the circular condenser. When we say circular, it means it's a, a cylinder instead of a V-bank. And we have about 45% more surface area, which is what you want for heat exchange. Uh, it also allows us a smaller footprint mm -hmm. so that we can put more chillers, you know, the same capacity in a smaller footprint. Uh, and we also have what's called a cascade flooded evaporator. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where we transfer the heat from the water loop into the refrigerant that goes through the compressors. And that cascade, instead of having a single pass evaporator, allows us to have a closer evaporator temperature to leaving water temperature, which is a, which is a goal of chiller performance. Um, some of the metrics that we can re reference, uh, that the market can reference is what we call KW per ton. So the amount of power that a circle miser uses per ton of cooling, uh, one is sort of the, you know, the, the, the mark of decent performance. If you're under one with KW per ton, you're in a good spot. Our range, depending on water temperature, ambient temperature, um, is from less than 0.7 to less than 0.1. So we talk about uh, KW per ton in that higher range, it's going to be our high temp. So we're able to 
apply our chillers to ambience as high as 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And that, again, is a metric that the market is looking for more and more, is to be able to be able to uh, reject heat in a market like Phoenix yeah. and factoring in um, heat recirculation. So they call it heat islanding. You know, these are all things that the more dense data centers have to deal with on a daily basis. Right. So you're figuring out these really tough challenges when it comes to the AI data center yeah. revolution, right? And, you know, the, the numbers that everybody looks at is PUE. Mm -hmm. So our PUEs uh, range from, and this is peak PUE, which means on a design day at a critical load. Um, the range is from less than 1.2 to less than 1.3, which again is very good. If you look at uh, a scroll compressor, and we didn't even talk about the compressors uh, in the circle miser, uh, it is a turbo core, which is magnetic bearing, oil free, and very, very peak energy efficient and operationally efficient. Um, that's really the, the core of Circle Miser. Amazing. Well, thank you for Welcome. telling our audience a little bit more about Circle Miser and about, you know, um, Geoclima and uh, the exciting news going on there. So mm -hmm. one last question, which is we always like to, you know, our guests in the hot seat, ask them a little bit about what's going on for next year. And um, so looking ahead to some, you know, strategic priorities, innovations, trends coming up for 2026 in the industry and for Munters, uh, what... What comes to mind? It's a fair question. Mm -hmm. And you know, I moderate a lot of panels, and there's always that last, what do you see coming? Exactly. Uh, and we already know what's coming. Um, there's such unprecedented demand right now. Uh, there are some simple things that we all need to work on together as an industry, uh, being supply chain, uh, being technology diversity, because uh, during the last supply chain crunch of during COVID, uh, there was a lot of issues with getting chips. So the electronic components that go into variable speed motors, drives, um, you know, there was a, a point where you couldn't buy spare parts because everything was going into new construction. And I anticipate that's going to happen again. Um, and you don't always, you can't really predict what is coming, but the more diversity that you have in the supply chain, the better. So that's everything from Raw material, I mean, tariffs adds a whole new wrinkle right. with, you know, um, sometimes unknowable impacts. Um, yeah. Other things that we're looking at right now uh, is increased capacities. So oh, right. increased capacities, not only of production, uh, we're building our new building in Daleville, Virginia right now. We have a 350,000 square foot plant. Uh, in Daleville that just opened in November of 22, and we're adding another 200,000 square feet that's going to be open at the end of Q2 of this 26 coming up. Amazing. Um, but we're also going to have to look at uh, integrated features. Mm -hmm. So in CDUs, uh, things like filling stations, glycol filling stations, or water quality monitoring. You know, there's things that, there, there are third parties that do that, but... The, the manufacturer is going to need to bring more and more into the solution combined with services. So services uh, such as uh, continuing maintenance um, and um, emergency service. So that's what I anticipate for Munters coming up in 2026. Incredible. Well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for joining us on JSA TV again and for sharing some insights with us. I know you go to a bunch of these events and you hear everything going on in the industry. So it's incredible to just take some time and sit down and hear from you. Yeah. Um, and thank you to our viewers for hanging out with us for another live interview here at DCD Virginia. Happy networking, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Candice. Thank you.